I don't want to dance around anymore. Ow! For a second there, I thought you might have been f***ing the door. Can you leave? Hello, Mindy. Um, okay. I'm gonna need to see some identification. It makes me feel young again. A question I often ask on my channel is, what is the last good comedy you've seen? You know, the kind where you're laughing so hard you spit your drink out in the theater. Go ahead, I'll wait. Bueller? Bueller? Chances are, it's been over a decade since you've seen one. But the correct answer is Tropic Thunder. And that movie came out way back in 2008. Another one was super bad, but that was way back in 2007. We haven't really gotten good comedy since. And now a new teen comedy debuted on Netflix called Incoming. But does it hold a candle to a film like Superbad? And besides being funny, is it actually any good? Join me, dear viewer, as I dive back into the raging dumpster fire that is modern Hollywood. Before we get into this, make sure to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out with continuing to grow and it's totally free. As I've mentioned in my series on the topic, the dark age of cinema coincided with the rise in political correctness and what I like to call Suya Syndrome, or Stick Up Your Ass Syndrome. It's a disease where you're so sensitive to incoming stimuli that every little thing upsets or offends you. The problem with this syndrome is that it stymies creativity and it stifles comedy. You can't write good, funny comedy if you're not ready to push boundaries and risk offending someone. Superbad was hilarious for several reasons, blending sharp writing, relatable characters, and situational comedy to create a timeless teen comedy. The film captures the awkwardness of adolescence, navigating through friendships, crushes, and the looming prospect of separation after high school. Many viewers saw themselves in the characters' struggles and triumphs. The friendship between Seth and Evan with all its ups and downs felt authentic, their banter, insecurities, and loyalty mirrored real-life teenage friendships. The script, written by Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg, was known for its realistic, rapid-fire dialogue. The characters talk like real teens, crude, insecure, and overly confident in their ignorance. The movie is packed with memorable quotes and one-liners that became part of pop culture, like McLovin. I am McLovin. And they literally made me stop eating foods that were shaped like dicks. No hot dogs, no popsicles. You know how many foods are shaped like dicks? The best kinds. The chemistry between Jonah Hill and Michael Sarah as Seth and Evan was spot on. Hill's boisterous energy complemented Sarah's awkward, understated humor, creating a perfect comedic balance. Christopher Mintz Plasse's portrayal of Fogel, aka McLovin, became iconic. His nerdy confidence and absurd fake ID subplot added an extra layer of humor. The plot was absurd enough to be funny. Two teens trying to buy alcohol for a party, getting into increasingly bizarre situations. Yet, it's grounded in the reality of what many teens would consider their biggest problem at the time. The stakes aren't life or death, but something that feels monumental to the characters. Getting alcohol for a party, losing your virginity, impressing a crush, making the comedy relatable. The film doesn't shy away from raunchy humor, but it's done in a way that feels natural to the characters. It's funny because it's how teenagers often speak and think. I know because I was one. Beneath the crude jokes, there's a genuine emotional core about growing up and the fear of losing your best friend. The film balances its humor with moments of genuine warmth and vulnerability. Released in 2007, Super Bad came out during a time when the teen comedy genre needed a fresh take. It resonated with a generation of viewers who were either living through similar experiences or looking back nostalgically at their own adolescence. So when a movie like Incoming comes out, obvious comparisons will have to be made. Does it live up to the hype? Well, let's see. Incoming is a 2024 teen comedy directed by Dave and John Chernin, making their feature film debut. They are best known for their work on the hit TV series It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. 
The story of Incoming revolves around four freshmen navigating the chaos of their first high school party. It takes a classic One Crazy Night format similar to films like Superbad and American Pie with plenty of hijinks, awkward encounters, and a mix of gross out humor and heartfelt moments. The main character, Benj, sees his friend's party as an opportunity to finally make an impression on his crush, Bailey, who is also his sister's friend, and a year older, which is a big deal back then. However, as the night unfolds, things quickly spiral out of control with everything from stolen cars to accidental drug use and wild misunderstandings, albeit very awkwardly. It seems to me that the film relies too heavily on cliches and familiar tropes from previous teen comedies rather than being original. It doesn't bring enough new ideas to the table, making some of the jokes feel stale and predictable, and that could be because it was written in a different style. The humor of It's Always Sunny is very different than that of Seth Rogen's comedy troupe and their collection of films from the early 2000s. The characters didn't have as close of chemistry as the characters in Superbad did, for example, making their comedic moments not feel as genuine. Another significant gripe I have with the movie is the lack of depth in its characters. While a film features a wide range of personalities, from the awkward freshman to the popular girl, these characters often come across as one-dimensional. They serve more as vehicles for jokes rather than fully developed individuals with relatable growth or emotional arcs. In Superbad, the characters of Seth and Evan are not only multi-dimensional and relatable, but they also evolve in a believable manner. This made it difficult for me to connect with or care about the characters' journeys. The movie also feels like it's trying to play it safe, not pushing any boundaries in any meaningful way. What made Superbad so good was its irreverence and lack of political correctness. People in the real world aren't robots that watch what they say to not offend anyone. It's scenes like this that make Superbad feel more authentic. Men, real men, do engage in this kind of locker room talk because it's what guys do. And I'm sorry to break it to you, but this happens at any age, not just in high school. Where incoming falters is that it toes the line as many films throughout the last 15 years have done. It plays it safe. We don't get very many politically incorrect jokes that push boundaries. Don't get me wrong, there were funny moments in the film, to be sure. Woo! K-hole! But nothing that flew in the face of the progressive messaging that we've seen in films throughout recent history. Despite these criticisms, I did appreciate its nostalgic nods to classic high school comedies, which we haven't gotten much of. The two characters of Eddie and Connor stealing their mother's boyfriend's Tesla harkens back to the early days of teen comedies as a nod to Risky Business where Tom Cruise takes out his father's Porsche out for a ride, leading to later shenanigans. For fans of the genre, the movie offers a comforting blend of familiar situations and humor with a modern twist. The story's chaotic party setting can still provide a few laughs and a sense of nostalgia for viewers who enjoy this type of comedy. Although it, although it draws heavily from past successes, Incoming does attempt to update the formula with contemporary references and situations that resonate with today's youth. There's tons of scenes with wannabe influencers posting their antics to TikTok and other forms of social media. This might make it more relatable for a younger audience, even if it doesn't break new ground in the genre. Also, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Bobby Cannavale's character of Mitch Studebaker, a chemistry teacher with a penchant for wild partying. Cannavale provided a lot of the comedic moments that the other actors failed to live up to. And that could be because of their relative inexperience, but it also could be the writing and direction of the movie. After all, Christopher Mintz-Plasse's first movie was super bad, and he is one of the most iconic characters of all time. Actually, come to think of it, it probably was the writing that was the problem here. Mason Thames as Benj and Bardia Seiri as Kush did bring up feelings of familiarity. Mason Thames has a striking resemblance to Brecken Meyer, who himself was the star of many teen comedies of the late 90s and early 2000s. Likewise, Bardia Seiri as Kush reminded me very much of Oliver Cooper's Costa from the 2012 teen comedy Project X. 
Hoosh was a lot like Costa, as he talked a lot of shit, but couldn't back it up when the moment of truth came. This particular character archetype was probably perfected by James Buckley's Jay Cartwright in the seminal British TV series, The Inbetweeners. So I had one bent over the table here. There was one up here I was fingering. I was just toe-fucking the one on the floor. Whilst your parents were sleeping in bump beds just over there. Quality. It's amazing how good you are with birds, Jay. Where the character of Koosh fell short was not pushing past the boundaries of the in-betweeners Jay Cartwright. And that's most likely due to the writing and direction in the film, rather than the actor's capability. In more capable hands, these two characters could have come alive a lot better. By not taking risks, the Chernin brothers fell short of creating something possibly great. So is it worth watching the movie? Well, as a made-for-Netflix movie, this movie does feel a bit like throwaway content rather than lasting cinema. With a little polishing, this could have been released in theaters and taken care of a problem that I've talked about on my channel before. The lack of mid-range budget movies. We've gotten super indie films and big budget comic book movies, but we haven't gotten movies in that 20 to 40 million dollar range, which this movie could have totally done well in theaters. The film does provide a few laughs, and I'd say it's worth seeing if you're a fan of the genre. But what do you guys think about all this? Did you like Incoming? And do you think it pushed the boundaries of comedy or did it play it safe? Please do let me know down below in the comments and as always hit that like button, ring that notification bell, and smash that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one. Everybody knows you never go full retard.